It's early morning in Juru, rural Zimbabwe. Like roughly one in two households in this country, the Shaka family is not connected to the national power grid, and so goes about their daily tasks in the dim light of the dawn. The country won its independence in 1980 after a multi-decade struggle against white minority rule. The war left Zimbabwe as a latecomer to the industrialization game, and like many of its southern African neighbors, the country inherited a colonial energy economy heavily reliant on coal. In the era of climate change, it's a state of affairs that policymakers understand is untenable. That Zimbabwe has revised its national determined contributions and committed to a condition of 40% per capita greenhouse gas emission reduction target by 2030. The question of where Zimbabwe should turn next for its power needs were top of mind for Dr. Sidney Gata, chairman of the country's Energy Supply Authority, when he attended the COP26 conference in Glasgow, Scotland late last year. We have not really fully prepared um, for the consequences of a world without coal. The question now is what is plan B? It's a question Zimbabwe's leaders will need to answer soon. They are to continue growing an economy battered by decades of inflation and Western sanctions. Zimbabwe is a country where demand for electricity is growing fast. Emerging industries and an increasingly urban population are growing hungrier each year for a steady supply of energy. But with a power system already strained by regular blackouts and more than half the population still not connected to the national grid, there's an urgent need to find new ways to grow Zimbabwe's daily megawatt output. One option will almost certainly be hydropower. For decades, the mighty currents of the Zambezi River have proved to be among the country's most reliable sources for electricity. This is the Kariba Dam straddling the countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. Now behind it lies the largest man-made lake anywhere in the world. And deep beneath my feet turn the hydropower turbines, which supply Zimbabwe with over half of its daily electricity needs. It's one of the largest concrete structures on the continent, completed in 1960 under British colonial rule. A capacity expansion project completed by China's Sino Hydro in 2018 means the dam is now the single largest contributor to Zimbabwe's energy mix. In this uh, country, China has done a tremendous amount of uh, work. Kariba is now the single largest supplier of electricity in, um, in, in Zimbabwe. Um, and it's the most dependable source that we have. And the expansion project that was completed by the Chinese government and companies it really is today's anchor of our electricity supply security. It's the kind of project that planners hope to see more of, encouraged by recent promises by China to help developing countries shift away from coal power. China did pronounce uh, that it will no longer support uh, coal fired power plants anywhere in the world. But even here, climate change is making its impact felt. Reduced rainfall in recent years has put strain on the reservoir's reserves and, at times, has forced the power station to run at a reduced capacity. The irony of a country that is a net carbon sink being hampered by climate change impacts, even as it tries to rely more heavily on renewables, has not been lost on the national leadership. Zimbabwe has not been spared from climate change challenges. It is most unfortunate that the impact of climate change is disproportionately borne by the vulnerable communities which have contributed the least to the current stock of atmospheric carbon. Vulnerable countries must therefore be capacitated to mitigate, adapt and build resilience to climate change. Help from the West so far doesn't seem to be forthcoming. 2015 pledge by wealthy countries to provide $100 billion a year to support developing nations' climate change fight has failed to materialize, leaving many here to look elsewhere for partners to help Zimbabwe pursue its green transition. It has been the experience uh, of developing economies that promises are made uh, by the first world, so to speak, 
which I never really upheld. I, I, I'm of the view that uh, developing countries must also uh, not wait uh, for the um, breakthroughs to come from the first world. I think we must uh, at least uh, continue the pressure because you cannot overcome, you cannot even meet the so-called United Nations Millennium Goals, the seven goals, without electricity supply to Zimbabwean citizens. Authorities say the Zambezi River and its adjacent waterways still have a bounty of untapped potential when it comes to hydropower generation. If Zimbabwe's growing cities and expanding industrial base are anything to go by, new projects, whether fueled by combustibles or renewables, will have no shortage of new customers. Daniel Plafka in Zimbabwe for CGTN.